Well, today was a close call. I narrowly avoided a red day recap. I thought for sure this was going to be a red day recap. I was even getting the thumbnail ready. I was like, all right, it's over. There's no hope, but there's always hope. And I did end up recouping my losses and finishing in the green. So an exciting day today. And I'm grateful to be finishing in the green because you know what? Today's Friday before a long weekend. That's right, the markets are closed on Monday for Memorial Day. So anytime we go into a long weekend, I just expect that Friday is gonna be especially slow. And today was no exception. I knew that that was gonna be the case and I should have been a little bit more cautious. Now, as we break down the trades, you'll see that although I went red, I didn't go deep into the red. I didn't even come close to my max loss, but I did churn some commissions. I did go into the red and I'm just grateful that I was able to recoup that loss and recover. I started today with a few small winners and then I gave it all back in about two, maybe it was three trades. All right, let's start diving in and going over these trades. And we're going to start by looking at ONMD. This was my um this was my best trade of the day, in fact. This is a stock that uh we traded yesterday as well, and I had a nearly $4,000 uh, profit on it yesterday. It put in a really nice move yesterday morning, and it's just continued to hold up, as you can see. So we had uh, yesterday, this was down around 50 cents a share, and it squeezed all the way up here to 60 cents, 70 cents, a dollar, dollar 50, pulled back, pops up, rejects. I made my profit right in this area yesterday because it started to go parabolic. So right in here, it squeezes from 30 cents up to 40, 50, 60 cents. Right in there is where I traded it. That's where I made four grand yesterday. Now today, I had a little bit of a different approach. This was not the first stock I traded. It was actually uh, the last stock I traded. Uh, so I had a couple of trades on this. At the open, this rallies right here. It breaks through the volume weighted average price, which is our orange line right here. This is the orange line, the volume weight average price. It breaks through that line and it squeezes from 180 to 190 to 2, 210, 215, 220. It halts up at $2.36. It resumes, it dips. And I said, guys, I'm going to watch the dip off of $2.18. Why 218? Where did I get that line from? Let's go back here and notice that after hours yesterday, it sort of was holding support around 218. See how it dipped down here and held support? Then it came down again, it tested it, and it broke that level. It then came back up and tested it, proving that that's now resistance. So now fast forward here to this morning, I still thought that level was in play. So we broke through it, but I thought, let's look for a retest of that level. It bounced off that level, and that's right where I got in. I got filled at about 220. Two. I got a little bit of slippage, but it's fine. I was in close to that level and it bounces right up to 263, up to 280. And right there, I locked up some profit. Now, unfortunately, I didn't take as many shares as I wished. I probably should have had, but that was my first trade on ONMD. Now, let's step back for a moment and, um, and let me show you where I started the day. Let's see. So when I first sat down this morning, as always, I pulled up my scans. This was at about... Uh, it was about 6.30, 6.40, and I pulled up my scan and I saw the leading percentage gainer was AKAN. And I saw that the float was especially low on it. So AKAN uh, is actually the second leading percentage gainer right now. It's up 73%, but it was up over 100% this morning. So I looked at it on my phone and I saw, it's interesting because I was like, oh, it's, it has this recent move here. It popped up, but I don't remember that. And I actually was wondering, did I trade this? But then I saw, oh, they just did a reverse split yesterday, a 40 to one reverse split. So that means when it made this move, it was a cheap penny stock. And you look at the shares, it shows almost 600 million shares of volume. Okay, so that makes sense. I wouldn't have traded it because it's a cheap penny stock. So they do the 40 to one reverse split and it starts popping up. And when I sat down and, and I, I decided to come over here actually at about 645 because this looked so good and i took my first trade at five dollars and 30 cents on this i got in right here it was right about here on this micro pullback that was my first entry it started to squeeze up and i recognized that it had a little pivot um right around let's see the high of this level here right around 519 it broke above that and then i thought that the next level was up here around 543 and then the next level was 
right around here 558 and then I was sort of watching this level here which was 576 and then the high of 650. So I took my first trade right here at about 657 uh, in the morning and you know on that trade um I got in at six at sorry five dollars and thirty four cents. I added at five thirty nine and five forty two, and I took profit at five forty six, and I was up four hundred bucks. And I was like, you know what? That's a decent little trade. It's nothing huge, but that breaks the ice, and I'm in the green. Now it ends up squeezing higher. It goes up to five sixty five, and I'm like, oh shoot, I sold too soon. It goes up to five seventy five, and what I decided to do was I added back. I added back on this at 570, thinking that it was going to just push right through six. So that was basically right on this candle here. And that ended up being a mistake. It went up to a high of 590, and I held because I was thinking we're coming right into 7 a.m. This thing might rip, and then it flushed. So I ended up stopping out, and then I was red $150 on the day. Okay, so let's get out the whiteboard here. Um, all right, so let's see. Um, put that there, put this here, put that there. Okay, so first trade of the day, in the green, 400. Second trade of the day, now in the red, minus, uh, well, we'll make it more like that, minus 150. All right, so went into the green, 400, now in the red, minus 150. All right, so that's that's our flat line on the day. So I never like to go in the red, but in the red, but it's of course only 7 a.m. Still very, very early. So no real, no real stress there. Not, not too concerned. Okay. So now um, the next trade that I take, and let me just back out of this for a second. Uh, I'm just going to put this over here. By the way, um, if you haven't already checked out our Memorial Day sales, you could check them out right here. These sales are live right now. So we'll put a link um, in the description that you guys can check out. These have coupon codes automatically applied, and these are bundles that you could join. This is just our standard software subscription, which isn't discounted. We This is a, not, not really a lot of margin on that for us because it's a lot of market data fees and server costs. So that's the subscription there for the software. But uh, the educational courses, we've got some nice discounts on memberships here that you guys can check out. So that's warriortrading.com slash memberships. All right, so I'll put that up there. So ACAN, um, at 7.15, I ended up breaking the ice with another trade on it. And that was, uh, let's see, right in this area here. All right. So as it was curling here, I went for a trade for the breakthrough six. But man, well, actually, it was right over six. It was for the squeeze up to 650. But man, this thing was heavy. And that was what I noticed about this stock. It was very thickly traded. There was something funny about it. Uh, I just, I don't know what it was, but I feel like there were a lot of people selling. Uh, classic, maybe reverse split, maybe an offering coming. I'm not sure. And then as we got closer to the open, it just kept kind of selling off. So in total, I'm up 200. Oh, let me show you my PL. So I'm up $1,940.94. I have $250 of profit on AKAN. I'm up on TIRX, DBGI, red on BTTR, and green on ONMD. So $250 of profit on ACAN, honestly, didn't even cover my commissions because I traded it a bunch. I got in, I got out, I got in, I got out. I just, um, I just didn't, couldn't make any money on it in a, in a meaningful way. So then the next trade was DBGI. DBGI hits the scanners this morning, and I made 110 bucks on it. Uh, it first popped up right here. It then pulls back, and then as it curls back up, I was like, okay, it's curling back up. I'll take that trade. Got in. It pops up. Got right back out. Didn't hold didn't like it. So quick little trade on that. Next trade was TIRX, sort of a similar pattern. TIRX initially popped up, pulled back, and then ripped back up right here. And as it ripped back up right here, I bought a 10 second micro pullback at 371. And this became at the time my best trade of the day. So that micro pullback was uh, right here. See how it squeezed up? To 370 right there oh, sorry right here squeeze up to 370 it pulls back just for a moment right there i bought that micro pullback right there on that dip by the way if you want to download my micro pullback strategy pdf i'll post that link in the description as well you can download it you can print it out and you can study it over the weekend 
this is a setup that I trade all the time. You get a squeeze up, just a momentary pullback, I get in and then ride the next leg up. So that was a $700 winner for me right there. Um, not bad, you know, 370 up to 395, $4. It then pulled back, came back up again, but I didn't want to overstay my welcome on it. What I noticed was kind of interesting today was that we had a number of stocks where we broke below um, volume weight average price and then came back above it. You'll see here on TIRX, below VWAP, below VWAP, back above it, below VWAP, you know, back above it. Same thing on AKAN, dipping below, then coming back up to it, dipping below, then coming back up to it. Not really sure what the deal was with that. AKAN also formed a pretty clear double top right here, uh, which, you know, just wasn't strong enough to break through that level, which was surprising considering the float is so low, but that's what makes me think that they must be selling shares. Something, something's, um, something's not quite right on that to me. So that's AKAN. Um, so then at that point, I had these three trades here and I'm up about 1100 on the day. And I was like, you know what, guys, that, that might be it for me. Now, I felt a little bad saying that because it was only about 9.15 a.m., but I was like, I just don't know. I don't think I'm going to take any more trades before the open. I'm just going to sit tight. So I'm going, making my tea and just whatever. And then I hear the scan alert, alert, alert. So I hustle over and I see that BTTR is hitting my scanner. And I was like, oh, okay, BTTR. Yes, this is another one that popped up earlier. And you know what? This one, I let, let's see what it wants to do. So what you'll see here is that it popped up earlier at about 8. 20 it pulls back and then it rips from 550 all the way up to 650 to seven over seven dollars now it's back at 430 i'm red on it okay so what i did on this one and this is super super annoying so i'm gonna zoom forward here so um so i jumped in this at five dollars and 76 cents which was not a bad entry what was that entry boom micro pullback right there here's the problem I only filled 50 shares. I filled 50 shares of a 2,500 share order. That's it. It immediately goes to six, 610, 620. And then right here, it pulls back just for a moment. And I bought this little micro pullback right here at 550. The problem there is that I bought full size. I bought 4,500 shares. And now it pops up to 80 and then it flushes down to 620. It bounces back up to 640 and I sold for a thousand dollar loss back to flat on the day. All right. So now let's check back in. So I had made my way back to up plus um, 1,100 approximately. And then in one trade, I went back to basically flat on the day. And then I got back in and I lost another thousand just like that. So that was super, super annoying. The spot I got back in was um, right here at 35 as it was coming back up. And I bought uh, 4, 000, 3,000 shares on the second attempt right here. It goes up. I'm holding into the open. It flushes down. I stopped out. It then rallies back up and halts up. Unbelievable. That is a trigger. I was so annoyed. And then... Well, it ends up resuming lower and dropping even lower. So I guess as it turns out, maybe I was lucky, but but not so lucky because I'm still down 2000 bucks on it. So I'm red on this. And at that point, I'm now down 1000 on the day, minus 1K. Uh, but I know that I've already got probably three $400 in fees and commissions. So I'm really down probably more like 1.4, you know, 1400, something like that. So now I'm starting to think, all right, I'm on a red day. I don't want to push it. It's the Friday before a long weekend. I don't want to have a max loss day. You know, two red, two red trades and immediately, you know, down a thousand. Maybe this is the spot just to walk away right here. And so I'm sitting kind of patiently thinking I might not take any more trades. And then ONMD halts up at three at 236. Right. And so this brings us back to where we started. Um Halts up right here at 236. And so if you see this here, we got this nice squeeze up 236. And then it ends up resuming a little lower, which is not uncommon in this case, a little lower. 
The reason it's not uncommon is because there were so many people trading this stock that some of the people oh. trade. Oh my God. Sorry, my dog's barking. June, that's enough, girl. Some of the people trading don't understand circuit breaker halts. And because they don't understand circuit breaker halts, all of a sudden their their orders are not going through. The market's frozen. It's suspended. They don't know what's happening. And they panic. So you get some people that take away their buy orders and they turn around and put out sell orders. You get a momentary dip. But as I said, that for me was a buying opportunity off of that 218 level, which I was looking at from uh, from yesterday that I had shown you on the one minute chart. So so I did a dip right there and I bought um, 5,000 share starter. And now this is, I suppose this is one area where I, I guess actually I did break a rule uh, because I bought 5,000 shares. I added another 5,000 at um, 28 and I add another 5,000 at 30. So 15,000 share position. Hmm. Okay. So the thing is on this is that the, this is the area that's tough because these cheaper stocks. So that's about a $30,000 position. Now, meanwhile, for what it's worth on AKAN, 5,000 shares, five times six is also a $30,000 position. So similar dollar amount at risk, but share size uh, definitely bigger on ONMD. I felt comfortable with that. And I didn't feel like I was doing that to compensate for the loss. I just felt like this is a, a stock that's cheaper. It's moving in a relatively small range. And I'm just not going to make much money if I only take 2,500 or 5,000 shares, five or 10 cents, which might be a good winner for this. It's just not going to be worth it. So I did take a little bit more size. And what I've generally said is that I'm not going to increase share size above 5,000 shares unless I'm up over $1,000 on the day. However, these cheap stocks have been an exception to that in some days in the last week or two weeks or so, because realistically, I just can't really make as much profit with small size. So anyway, so so there was that. But um, so we got this squeeze right here and it rips up to um, to 60. So we got this first pop right here up to a high of about 36 and I sold. I took my profit. It then dips down here and I added back as it curled back up right here. So I got back in for the squeeze higher. We squeeze up to 60. We go sideways and then we pull up to 70. We hit a high of 80. So on that trade, I made um, about $1,200. Uh, a little bit more than that. They were small, kind of small scalps. So now I go from minus 1,000 to up uh, 600. I was up 600 on the day. So I guess $1,500. So now I'm up 600. I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. And then I had a loss and I was up only uh, $250. But at this point, when I was up 250, I knew that I probably now had 500 in commissions. So I was probably really down 250. So I was like, all right, I'm starting to, you know, I got to be careful because I'm really churning a lot of fees and commissions. And so at that point, um, we had a bit of sideways consolidation. And then we had this move right here. So I want to show you the live recording of this move. Um, this will be added to the classes for um, my Warrior Pro members. But um, but I'll show you guys what this looked like. So, so as this pops up right here, um, on the 10 second chart, you can see we squeezed up and we've got a little micro pullback right there. So when I look at that, um, we get that nice move up and then that little pullback right there. Generally, this is a spot where I'm a buyer. So in this case, I did go ahead and I bought, let's see, um, I got filled we'll get zoomed in here. We're, we're really zoomed in, but that's okay. Um, sorry. Okay. So I'm going to get filled right here at, um, 271, 5,000 shares. Okay. Boom. I'm in at 71 to 5,000 shares. And what I was thinking at that moment when I got in was that we were going to pretty much immediately squeeze through this, um, this 250 level. Sorry. Let me just back up this for a second. Sometimes the zoom does not function the way you would like it to. Um, all right. So, so anyway, so I thought we were going to punch immediately through this 280, 275, 280 level. So I get in and it sort of dips for a second. And I'm like, all right. Hmm, okay. Well, fortunately, 5,000 shares for me is a starter position. 
especially on a cheaper stock like this. It's got 48 million shares of volume. It's very liquid. So I'm thinking, well, the previous support was 250. So I'm going to watch off of $2.50. So as it comes back down here to about 250, it's going to dip down right here. And I try to buy right here. I click the buy button. So watch this. I'm going to click the buy button and my order is going to get rejected. Risk check failed. Why? So risk check failed because my order here is for $2.81. And that's more than 10% above the current price, just a hair above 10% above the current price. And so for that reason, the order is rejected immediately. So if I'd been able to add the 5,000 shares there, I'd be in at an average of like 60, you know, 60 something. So, so now it starts to bounce and I'm like, well, and in fact, for a moment, I didn't even realize that my order didn't fill. Uh, I thought it did. And then I was just like, wait, uh, wait, what happened? So then I realized it didn't fill and I'm like, all right, well, uh, do I add to it here? And so I do end up adding, uh, I bring the order down a little bit and I add 1500 shares. So let's see, I, I guess I put it back at 81, whatever. So I'm going to add here in just a second. It dips down again into the 50s. I'm now in with 6,500 shares. And I'm looking for the break through uh, 280. So I'm watching for the first one minute candle to make a new high. All right. So right now we've got um, 280 on the offer. Sorry, 280, uh, 280 is on the high. That's that's the, the breakout spot. We've got 265 on the offer. First candle is making a new high right now. And I put an order at 301. Um, there's 270. And right now I'm like, okay, I'm back in, in the green. And this little rejection made me nervous. I was like, uh oh, now it's looking like a red false breakout candle. Shoot. And this is one of those moments where I kind of just looked at the chart and I was like, but this is a really strong chart. So I ended up putting an order to sell at 79. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw a profit target order out there. And who knows? This might be one of those stocks that does a jackknife. It pops up, takes out my order, and then flushes back down. So I was like, I'll just put the order there. And if that takes me out, then that's fine. If not, well, whatever. So I leave it there for a minute. And it dips back down to 65. And I'm really thinking if this breaks over 275, we're probably going to start to fire up. So I end up canceling the order. Lots of buyers here at 73. Buyers at 74. And here's where I should have added. And look at that. Straight to $3. Straight to $3. I'm out at 299 and 294. So booking the profit there on the move to three. I was just like, holy smokes. And with that, uh, you know, I was like, you know what? That's that's good enough for me. Like that was a great that was a great resolution. That was really really nice. Again, I wish I had bought more shares. But uh, in any case, we got a nice trade. It wasn't a jackknife. You know, it actually went up and and held those levels, and then it ends up pushing a little bit higher. It ends up going over three, and I don't know if I, I think I stopped the recording, but it ends up going over three up to three fifteen, three twenty, and I scaled out the rest of it, and you know, locked up locked up some profit on it. So. All things considered, um, I was pretty happy with that trade and happy to finish the day and finish the week here um, in the green. If we take a step back and look at my metrics for the week here, uh, not including today, this is where I sit on the month right now. 40,000 in the green, green the first week, red the second week, green the third week, green the fourth week here and adding another, you know, well, so remember though, my fees and commissions. Um, so I did get myself now all the way back up to, um, you know, higher here, like, you know, just under 2000, but those fees and commissions now are probably 700, $800 on the day. Cause I was trading bigger size on ONMD. So realistically today, my fees and commissions are probably at least 40%, if not 50% of my profit on the day. That's not great. And that's the consequence of trading higher price, sorry, lower price stocks with bigger share size. And it's also just the consequence of, you know, trading a stock like ACAN that just kept not breaking out. It was just so choppy. So, you know, this ends up being a good, um, a, a nice week here. I kind of have, 
I don't know. I mean, I sort of like to be averaging around $15,000 a week. Those, those right now feel like pretty good weeks. Um, it doesn't happen every week. And of course, some weeks I, I far exceed that, but that's kind of what I've been focusing on. I do still have my daily goal of $5,000, but it's not been my daily average this year. So that goal is more a little bit optimistic. My daily average, though, obviously, is the, the average, including the red days. So my average green days, if we looked here at the metrics, um, we could look at win, lo win lo versus loss days, uh, just starting um, year to date. So year to date, average green days are 4,200 right here. Average red days are 4,600. So that's actually... I didn't even I, I didn't even know this until we just looked at this. So that's interesting to see. Um, average per share gain six cents versus minus eight cents. Losers are a little bigger on those red days. That makes sense. Um, and the good news is that my um, quantity of days is eighty four percent of them. Eighty days so far, are winning days, and only fifteen losing days so far this year. Um, on my winning days, my accuracy is 67%. On my losing days, my accuracy is like 40%. So I've, I've really got to get better at recognizing when I'm just not in the zone and quit sooner. So these losing days have cost me 70 grand this year. So, you know, my net on the year is 340 minus 70. So, you know, I mean, it's, I, I can't complain. I'm, I'm making some nice progress. And for what it's worth, um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, the today when I was talking to members at Warrior Trading. So we can look at recent here over the last 90 days. You know, you can see, obviously, I have some drawdowns like anyone else. You know, my trading, um, it's pretty consistent, but I do have, you know, some dips here. I had a couple red days in March, a couple more red days, and they've been clustered together. So here it's like two red days, two red days, two red days, two red days. So, you know, I, I'm in this sort of streak here with back-to-back -back red days. But in any case, um, if we look at what I was going to show you um, here is my p and um, for the year. And I got to just, I'm not, I don't want to put my account number on here, but my p and for the year, um, what's maybe significant is I started the year with $110,000 and my account uh, right now has $340,000 in it. So the account's up really nicely so far this year. Now, some people would say, Ross, you should start with a million dollars, 1.1 million, you have 3 million. But that's not the case because remember, I would have had to have traded with 10 times the position sizes on every trade I took you know, this whole year in order to produce 10 times the profit. And since my average winners and losers right now are six and eight cents, I wouldn't have been able to move in and out of the market with that kind of size. So it wouldn't have been possible. But uh, I do have obviously a strategy that I trade that helps me grow relatively small accounts. And then what do I do with this excess profit? Well, pretty soon I'm probably going to take $250,000 out of this account and I'm going to put it in the market long term. I'm going to set it. I'm going to forget it. I'm not going to think about it. And I'm not going to touch it. Now, I don't even look at it for the most part, um, except a couple times a year because I've been trading in a retirement account. So in this retirement account, I can't actually withdraw my profits that I make trading until I'm uh, 59 and a half years old. So since I still have a lot of time, uh, right now I'm just trying to grow the account as quickly as I can so I can benefit from 20 years of compound interest, right? Just invest dividend paying stocks and let it ride and, and you know, not, not think about it. So that's kind of my psychology. And you know, the incredible thing for me about day trading is the fact that you can do it in tax deferred or tax free accounts, depending on which you choose a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA. It, it's an incredible opportunity. Now, of course, we still need, you know, to make some money to pay bills. And fortunately, you know, over the years, I've been able to build up my software company at Warrior Trading. We've got the scanners, we've got the educational platform. So that provides more of, at least for me, it's diversified my income. So I've got that. And then of course I have my book and I have YouTube and things like that. So those are things that, you know, you can't, you can't put, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't, you can't write a book in your Roth IRA. You can't um, create a software company in your Roth IRA. You know, you could invest in a company, but anyways, uh, I think something that I am a big advocate of for traders is to do everything you can to maximize your tax-free 
income and savings and growth, and then only make what you absolutely need to cover your cost of living in a taxable account. All right. So anyways, I hope you found this episode helpful and I hope you found it interesting and I'll be back at it first thing on Tuesday morning. So I hope you guys enjoy the long weekend and I'll remind you as always that trading is risky. My results aren't typical. So manage your risk, take it slow and we'll see you back here on Tuesday morning.